Good afternoon, everyone. This is Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for February 23rd, 2021, Tuesday, 3 p.m. Eastern. Uh, just to remind everybody, we have a Time for Change call tomorrow night, Wednesday, at 9 p.m. Eastern on this line. And uh, I'm going to be, uh, I, I now have a, I'll discuss that. I'll, I'll share that on the TFCC. We think about perfect timing, and perfect timing is in everything. You know, the tomato falls from the vine when it's ripe. The butterfly emerges from the cocoon when its wings are strong enough to fly. And when you are truly ripe and willing to trust in the divine timing of this life, you will start to relax and enjoy everything. It boils down to you trusting you and the divine timing of everything. So you just, this is where you go with the flow. Trust that everything is unfolding as quickly and perfectly as it can. The rose flower wouldn't be so perfect if it was rushed to blossom any faster. Sometimes we have a tendency to kind of push or rush things. You know, that's when we get in a hurry. We get that hurried feeling. It's very subtle at first. And then it causes us to start... And, and we don't know it uh, most of the time that we're hurried, pushing, rushing, forcing. And when you realize that this divine timing is behind everything, it's guiding every atom in the universe and every newborn baby in, into existence. And this, again, we're faced with, you know, that let's go, let go of your ego's time agenda and watch your entire being blossom wide. It's good to know this truth for when you say yes to this, the perfection of this moment, the entire universe celebrates you. Everything is carefully orchestrated for your awakening. It's perfect timing. We talk a lot about our, with ourselves, you know, we're seeking constantly. Uh, I just don't think we ever stop seeking the avenue of happiness, and it can be in different ways, and it can function different from different directions. And when we can come, and this is all about going within and staying and being within and discovering ourselves, when we come to the realization that there's no judging you know at first we do it we've done it for our whole existence in this life this body this life and other lives but when we begin to realize and we take the moment and we stop rushing and we stop hurrying and we stop trying to force the universe to do things quicker for us and we just sit back and relax And everything takes care of itself. And a lot of people say, well, that's just absolutely crazy. You can't just sit back and not do anything. We're not talking about not doing anything. We're talking, this is a whole different paradigm uh, for the civilization to exist in. Completely different. And when you have so many different minds that are constricted on this planet, it's difficult for them to comprehend that there is a different life. There is a different life. There is a different existence. It isn't always surrounded by this, what we are engaged with currently. Because when you, when you connect with the collective consciousness, which you are part of, you plug into all the consciousness of all the beings, of all the souls that are connected 
to the collective consciousness. It's not just you and you realize that the illusion of separation is eliminated and you realize that you're with everyone, every consciousness. So this is when we talk about expanding our imaginations and having no limits placed on them by the ego nor the mind or subconscious mind. When we see the perfection and the seeming imperfection that seems to be, we have very busy, intense, and, you know, uh, sometimes light, sometimes deeply complex experiences. And every day, every moment, we are dealing with ever-increasing the technologies that can complicate the natural uh, human experience of life in, in a invasive and personal way. It seems that in order to discover real happiness is that we need to balance, we choose to balance out of life's complexities with an approach of absolute simplicity. We have a, uh, we have a, a propensity to create complication. When we look at something that's simple, we, if, we, we find that we must complicate it for some reason. That it can't be, you ever heard, you've, you've probably said this yourself, it can't be that simple. There's got to be more to it than that. And, and that's the ego mind connecting with that. Say, why can't? Why does it have to be complicated to, in order for it to be effective, or in order for it to operate? It's our perception and our connection with the physical world that kind of di di distracts us in different directions. And when we look at life's problems, it might be very serious and complicated, and yet the answers are always surprisingly simple. Have you ever done that with yourself where you, you're sitting with yourself, you're saying, well, this can't be that. Let's look at this from a simple point of view. And then you're amazed and say, I, you know, and, and, and maybe someone, someone chimes in and says, well, why don't you try this? And you go, you know, I never thought of that. That's really simple. I've been over here super analyzing and trying to conflict everything and complicate everything, and that's, that's perfect. Works flawlessly. And we talk about this a lot, and it's for contemplation in the meditation for everyone on this planet. Not just on the surface either. When we find, when, when we, look, we understand that we are the happiness in our daily lives, we develop an unstoppable habit. And the unstoppable habit is of appreciation. And, I, and I'll say this for thousands of years, it's appreciation. It's thank you, thank you, thank you. It's deep gratitude. And the reason that we, we, we go over and over this so much is because it's a, it's a reprogramming of ourselves. Because it's, you ever notice that it isn't that easy to stay in gratitude or appreciation? It's not a bad thing. It's just how we've been trained. Because, of course, it's all connected. We have this hurry, rush, Hurry, rush, and fear. Fear causes us to hurry and rush. Then it becomes more and more complicated. Then we become more stressed as it becomes more complicated. Who's complicating things? Is there some, you know, hidden being out there causing us to, to, to rush and then become stressed? What is it? It's the ego mind. This is all about learning because when you understand that you can literally move yourself 
outside of the ego mind, all of these things, you begin to move more into the seamless ease of appreciation. And when you fall into appreciation, and I mean not just sporadically, someone, you know, someone does something in your appreciation, of course, but for no reason but for you to be in appreciation for you to be. You're always in appreciation, 24-7. And you rem we remind ourselves of this. Of course, it, it's a good practice to remind ourselves. Because remember, we've got tens of thousands of thoughts banging us every single second, which cause us to go off in many different directions. I don't think really, I don't believe that there's any one of us on the surface of this planet that aren't, in, you know, that aren't interested in experiencing happy life. I mean, you come up to somebody and says, you know, would you like to experience happy life? And they say, well, absolutely. But, I, you know, and then you have, you have this, this ego come in and say, you can't have happy life every day. What are you talking about? How can you, how can you actually think that you can have happy life every day? You see that perspective is a little twisted. Because when it all boils down to it, on the self-discovery within ourselves, we find all of these open doors, so to speak. Is that when we discover that we're the happiness and the soul within us, the God within us is the happiness, why we won't look for it. I, I, I hear from so many people that talk about how lonely they are reason they're lonely is because they're not connected with the God within them. They're not. They are, but they, they don't know they are. Let's put it that way. There's no separation. So they're, they're part of the God within them, and they are the God within them, but they don't know it. And can you imagine that you consciously know and validate for yourself that you are part of, and, and connected to all things, literally. And it is absolute that when you become consciously aware of you, of your God, you'll know that all the particles of existence, you're part of those. When you're in the collective consciousness, and you're consciously in it, okay, because we all are, but a lot of us aren't consciously, when you're in that collective consciousness, you're tapping into all the souls, all of them. There's no, you can't count the numbers because you, there's no numbers to identify how many. It's so vast. But you see, that, this is part of our journey is to understand that you, all of us, when we become consciously aware enough, we will, we're connected. We are part of all of the souls, all of them, which means that you can tap into all of the knowledge banks, all of the knowing. Where do you think our imaginations come from? And this is what's so silly that we suppress our imaginations because we believe that the external reality, the external authority, which dictates to us, is that that can't be, that can't be done. So you create educational systems and patterns that reaffirm and enforce that so that we are trained to believe that you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't do that. That's just it's not possible. When there isn't anything that isn't possible, we can create anything. We have no limits at all. And that's the truth. But see, there's things that they're like little switches that we've been conditioned with. And that sw these switches will go off. It doesn't mean we know they go off, but they go off and then they stop us dead in our tracks. Oh, that's superfluous. That's silly. That's a waste of time. That can't be. 
That's impossible. No one can do that. You see? And then you come along somebody that's doing something that at one time you said, that's impossible, no one can do it. And you witness them doing it. Have you ever done that? Have you ever experienced that? I have several times. And then you learn that there's no limitations, or the only limitations that we put on ourselves are the ones that we put on ourselves. That's why I constantly say it's all about you. It's just nothing, it's not even connected to what you'd call selfishness at all. This is about you discovering you. So happy life. Is there any reason why any of us on this planet shouldn't have happy life, experience happy life, on day-to-day basis, second-to-second, moment-to-moment? There's no reason, except we begin to understand, embrace ourselves and say, I'm the one that's been blocking my happy life. When I go with the flow, when I... And when I remind myself to surrender and to uh, let go of things and to let go of my attachments and expectations and, and just go with the flow, there's always going to be someone that's going to come from the outside, maybe someone you know, maybe someone you don't, that will try to put a kibosh on that. They'll make a statement or they'll say something. And then maybe you'll be influenced by it. And then maybe you'll, you'll reflect and say, well, maybe they're right. Maybe this isn't possible. Okay, how we allow others to influence us. So happy life. And you begin, you start for yourself... we begin to realize what causes us pain. What causes us pain is the opposite of gratitude. What is that? Okay. What causes us pain is the opposite of gratitude. Ingratitude. Ingratitude is pain. It is the opposite of gratitude which is the desire to have more. And here, and when we begin, we all have been uh, uh, slipped into this, the, that burning, yearning, lacking feeling of desire makes us forget about appreciating life and others. Our mind chases desires all day long. Relentless, always chasing desires, always, always feeding itself with the next tantalizing morsel of what will make its life better. The mind is always yearning for something bigger, 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 better, 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 or more amazing to improve its existence. And this is discovery. So when we end up following the mind around, we end up feeling lost in this life. You ever felt lost in this life? It's as if we didn't have anything better to do with our day. We become like a robot that just obeys what the mind says. And when the mind says this is good, we smile. And when the mind says this is bad, we frown. So your mind is kind of like a tyrant, okay? And you you choose to, to step back from it. You must step back from it if you're going to, if you desire to become free from it. It simply needs to to see and feel a deep, heartfelt appreciation for the life that is all around.
happy life. Gratitude unlocks the fullness of life. It can turn a meal into a feast, a house into a home, a stranger into a friend. Gratitude makes sense of our past, brings peace for today, and creates a vision for tomorrow. And remember that your mind, it's always set on fulfilling its desires no matter what. It's a mindset. It's a desiring mindset. And it blinds us. And not until it feels happy will it stop. What we choose to do is realize that we are the master of this mind. And we can relinquish our attachment to its ever-pressing list of needs, wants, and desires. And I'm not saying that desires are bad. It's just that our attachment to fulfilling them leads to forgetting the divine experience of gratitude, love, and appreciation. It's like when we fall in love with someone... The mind needs them more than it needs our own heart. And we stop falling in love with ourselves. Have you ever done that? Have you ever fall in love with something or someone? And it becomes, it, 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 it literally becomes more and we stop falling in love with ourselves. We stop loving ourselves because we literally immerse ourselves in the love for another and we stop loving ourselves. Someday, you'll find all who love are blind, and when your heart's on fire, you must realize smoke gets in your eyes. That's the platters. Remember that song. There is hope for this civilization. We can learn how to find peace within ourselves. It's always within. No matter how the mind shows up for you, For us, we can merge with our hearts and put the burning, desiring mind on the back burner. In your heart, you can find that it's easier to relish your daily challenges, seeing them as opportunities, and use the great healing, loving gift that life has given you. In the heart, we don't avoid the negative and only seek the positive. We tend to see and feel the positive within the negative in all things. Happy life. In the heart, we tend to be open, accepting and allowing for life to come into us. The totality of this existence is naturally caressing our heart and soul every day. And it is our job to appreciate this gift however we can you could be sitting I've sat with people that maybe had enough food for maybe a couple of days one much one much at all a little bit of bread a uh, little, little bit of um, a kind of soup and, and that was pretty it. but you know something to be deeply and grateful and appreciative of whatever it is is huge it is huge to practice and make front and center how do you think you step into happy life because you step into yourself and you discover that you you are happy life and it's what you view how you form things you know, some people will say, you know, this is just absolutely crappy. This is ridiculous. That's just massively negative. And then you sit there and say, I don't know about that. There's always positive in everything. Oh, you're a dreamer. You know, that's not realistic. You don't hear that stuff when it comes at you. You know. That's it. You know. And eventually they'll know.
And, and, and once you discover this, and you will because it's coming up very quickly, to be really alive in this lifetime, you must get beyond wanting more, needing more, having more, and being more. To be really alive in this lifetime, you must get beyond wanting more, needing more, having more, and being more. All of us must choose to let go of thinking there is something better than this moment. We must know with knowing there is always something bad in the good and good in the bad. And to develop a repetitive habit of authentic appreciation a repetitive habit of authentic appreciation. This can seem huge and daunting to some, yet the reality of it is truly fun, enjoyable, and effortless. You're not beating yourself up. The feeling of appreciation is our most natural state of being. When ego is lost, limit is lost. You become infinite, kind, and beautiful. When ego is lost, limit is lost. You have no limitations when the ego is lost. You then become infinite, kind, and beautiful. Yogi Bhajan. So if you will, happy life, if you will, Go to the place where you're not going to be interrupted. And I'm sure we all are. And the first thing that we care to do is relax our bodies. And it's almost like, body, it's time for us to relax. We're going into meditation. You're going to be absolutely just totally relaxed. You're not going to have care in the world. I'm alleviating all the stress, all the confrontation, all of the irritability, all of the worry, all of the fear, all of that. I'm letting it go. It doesn't serve you any good, and it doesn't serve me any good. If, if you disagree, let me know. Body's not going to disagree. Body's going to be right with you. So you let it go. And as you let it go, you feel it. You feel it from head to toe inside and out. Your shoulders relax. The face drops. You don't realize it because most of the time our face is, our face is stressed. But we're so used to it, we don't know it. Until we draw attention and then we just let go and then we notice it drops. Even your toes, your feet carry a lot of stress. Your hands you let it go. You just watch it as it just vaporizes off, like steam rising. It evaporates. So your body relaxes. And then you move into the now. Why would you want to be in the past that's gone and the future that doesn't exist? It doesn't make sense, does it? The now stills the mind, the ego, and the subconscious mind. What does still mean? It means that you step outside of them. You're no longer in them. They're no longer ruling you. Okay? You're, you're not judging them. You're learning how to master them. And the only way you can do that is step outside of them. They can become powerful allies, assets, and servants to you. They're horrible masters. Absolutely, ridiculously horrible masters.
Now, some of us, real well, a lot of us, most of us reminisce. We go in the past. We embrace things. We, we, we go over things. Memories, okay? Memories. They're great to have. Not all of them are great to have, but a lot of them are. And so we, we reminisce and we go back. You know, you might have a Christmas or, oh, I remember we got this and, you know, what was going on then and how nice it was. And it's just connections, uh, which is fun. But some of us stay there too long. And then we get so connected with it. Imagine that. You're in an elephant graveyard. There's, There's nothing alive. And you're just sitting there hanging out with nothing alive. Imagine that. And how many of us in that picture would really d- desire to do that? So some of us are just sitting in that elephant graveyard, hanging out, and we stay there way too long. And so we take that past, we bring it into a future that doesn't exist. We create that future from that past and relive that past in that future. This is why so many people find themselves saying, why is it that I end up in a seem like I end up in the same place all the time? No matter what I do, I always end up here. So, then there's those of us who go into the future. But it doesn't exist because we, we only create the future in the now by living moment to moment. This way, we're not sitting there going, what if this, what if this, and when is this going to happen? When is that going to happen? We don't, that's not there anymore because we're we're in the moment, in the now, space between heartbeats. But how do we stay in the now? Because we have these thoughts that kind of slip in and out of the clear blue, we end up kind of floating off with these thoughts out of the now, probably maybe into the future or the past again. Your breath, it is our divine positive energy, our breath sustains these bodies which house the kingdom of God. This is divine positive energy. Our breath focuses us. It relaxes us, eases us. It strengthens us. It's phenomenal. So our breath, our breath is divine positive energy. So it's good. It's a, it's good that you know that. Okay, so I'm wandering off. Not a big deal. I'll just focus on my breath, and I'll be in the now. And remember, it's it's all about you. So when others try to rush you to be out of the now. There's, there's nothing they can do to pull you out of the now unless you allow them. doesn't matter what they think. Well, you're really crazy. How can you just stay in the now? You know? We got to get going. You got to get going. You got to get in a hurry. You got to get here. Got to get there. And you're just floating right along. So your breath. Whenever you wander off with thoughts, focus on your breath. I guarantee you, 3,000% of the time, you'll be in the now. Now, remember, your body's relaxed. You're You're not in the body. You're outside the body. You're watching it. Doesn't mean you're not connected to the body. Okay? It just means that your perspective, you're watching the body. And you see that it is relaxed and it's seated. And then you see that there's these seven vibrant, phenomenally beautiful circles of light. And they go from your tailbone all the way up top of your head. The color's nothing like here on this planet. There's so much more vibrant and so much more depth to the colors. And each one's a flower. And inside of it, and every flower is different. And inside of every flower is a different geometrical shape. 
And these are just absolutely breathtaking. It's just wonderful, the, 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 the vibrational frequencies. Because you see, you see an energy that's flowing through them. And, and picture, look at your body. It's like, it's like a, uh, a fountain. And you see this divine positive energy go up, and you see a fountain over your head, and then it comes back around up through the tailbone. And this is a perpetual motion of cosmic energy flow. So you go, this is, this is great. So you take your, your breath, your divine positive energy, and you merge it with your God force love light energy. Your God force love light energy is your, is your chi, your prana, your, your ki, okay? And you move it slowly. They go up through these chakras, and you start with, the red will of light. And the red will of light is our root chakra, our Moladhara. And then you move to the, and, and, it's, and, and it deals with survival, and it is blocked by fear. And fear is an illusion. Fear, guilt, shame, grief, lies, it's all illusion, ego attachment. Then we move to the orange will of light. This is our sacral chakra, our vadasthana. And the orange wheel of light deals with our pleasure, fun, happiness, joy, and it's blocked by guilt. Guilt is an illusion. And then we move to the yellow golden wheel of light. This is our solar plexus chakra, Amanapura. This deals with our willpower, and it is blocked by shame. And then to the emerald green will of light, this is our heart chakra, Anahata. And this deals with our love, and it is blocked by grief. If you are immersed in grief, you cannot love. Then we move to the blue wheel of light, the throat chakra, the, va the Vishuddha. This deals with our truth, and it's blocked by lies. So truth flows. It's our natural state of being. Truth is the God, and it is blocked by the lies, which is the illusion, which is the devil. And then we move to the indigo wheel of light. And this is the third eye chakra, the ajna. And this deals with our insight, and it is blocked by illusion. Your insight cannot open because all that you see is an illusion. And it's for you to be able to differentiate that and understand that. Then, you're, then your insight shines. Then we move to the violet wheel of light, the crown chakra, the sahasra. And this deals with our cosmic energy. We are cosmic energy. We make it up. And of all things, it's blocked by ego attachment. It is by our attachments that we block who we are, what we are. Remember, happy life. So we bring all this to the top of our heads, effortlessly. And we hold it briefly. We are light, we are love, we are God. And in that brief moment, we compress and condense it into pure liquid energy, omnipotently powerful. And we release it over our pineal glands. Now, the pineal gland is very important to us because none of us have a fully functioning pineal gland. We will because this 
connects us to all the particles of existence, to all of the collective consciousness, to the God, the God source, and beyond. There are no locked doors when it's fully functional. It brings you out to the sacredness of space and all that there is, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. Now, in Through Your Heart, Mind's Motion Picture, you can look at the pineal gland, however you see it. I see it as a green ball, a rosebud. And as soon as I release this pure liquid energy, it instantaneously transformed into a fully bloomed rose, massive, multicolored petals, beautiful fragrance and it sends out these very soft yet powerful shimmering frequencies these waves and when they come into me and i i the the the, the fragrance on top of it it's phenomenal because i then experience this this just a tremendously deep eternal peace Nothing like what you experience outside yourself. Not even close. It is so deep. And then I discover it is the God within me. And it is forever. And it always has been. Feel that through your heart, mind. Experience that. Breathe it in. This lends us to be consciously aware that we are of and from the highest of the deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest of the deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude. And we know that these bodies that we're in, and we know that our higher self, our spirit, our soul, our heart mind, our ego mind, our subconscious mind, the God, the God source, your consciousness, all one. And we also know that we are heaven on this earth. Each of us is the heaven. The God is within us. That's the heaven. Every step we take, we are creating paradise. And we are shining the light of the gods that we are within outward, which is flooding all of our brothers and sisters, whether they're awake or asleep, head to toe inside now, eternally, always. Happy life. Saturating all things. All life, the highest supreme value in the universes, everywhere. So see that in your heart, mind's motion pictures. See this planet. It's a God planet. There are billions of gods. All of them make up the one God. Each of them is stepping, creating paradise, and they are all heaven on this earth. And they are shining their light, which is so brilliant, everywhere. So this is a God planet that's glowing, and not by city lights. Happy life. So we're connecting with all of the consciously aware collective consciousness. We're all one, 
but we're specifically connecting with those who are consciously aware. The others of us will eventually come conscious. So we call out to all light energy beings and all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. And only those who are consciously aware that they're of and from the highest, of deepest, 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 eternal love, and of and from the highest, of deepest, 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 eternal gratitude, can be with us in this now, in this meditation, form of this circle of light, and the complete liberation of this planet Earth, Gaia, Arya, in this now. They come in the Googaplexes. One Googaplex fills this entire universe. They come in trillions of Googaplexes from trillions of universes. And they are all with us now consciously. It's phenomenal. Then we call upon all the inhabitants of inner earth, hollow earth, beneath earth, Garta, many civilizations, but only those who are consciously aware that they're of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude can be with us in this now, in this meditation, in the forming of this circle of light, liberation of this planet. And they come in the billions and they're with us now consciously. We call upon all of the galactics, off-worlders, celestials, you, the, the uncountable numbers. But only those who are consciously aware that they're of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude always can be with us in this now, in this meditation, in the form of this circle of light, complete liberation of this planet. Now, we're only familiar with a smidgen of them. Over a thousand travel through the solar system every day. Trillions travel throughout the universes every day. And the ones that we are familiar with, somewhat, Pleiadians, Syrians, Andromedans, Arcturians, felines, Zeta Reticuli, the Nords, the Greys, the Draco, the Reptilian, the Golden Pyramid, the Avian, many, many, many more. Now, they've been assisting us in our evolution, in our enlightenment, in our ascension, freeing ourselves from our own self-imposed bondage and our own self-imposed slavery. And they come in uncountable numbers. And they are with us now, consciously. We call upon all of our loved ones, all those who have ascended out of body in this lifetime and all lifetimes that we have inhabited. Yet only those who are consciously aware that they're of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude can be with us in this now, in this meditation, form this circle of light and complete liberation of this planet. And they come in the billions and they are with us now. We call upon all the light energy beings who have decided to be housed in the following forms, on, in, above, and below this planet Earth, Gaia, Arya, in this now, this meditation, liberation of this planet. Now, we're only familiar with a smidgen of them. They come in the trillions in shapes, colors, sizes, forms, configurations of which we've never seen before. And only those who are consciously aware that they are of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude can be with us in this now, in this meditation forming a circle of light, complete liberation of this planet. And the ones that we're somewhat familiar with, the fairies, the sprites, the elves, the gnomes, the dwarves, the trees, the trolls, the elementals, earth, air, water, fire, wood, ether, the 
the mermaid, the dolphin, the whale, the pegasus, the unicorn, the centaur, the minotaur, and many, many, many more. And in the trillions, they are with us now consciously. Arm in arm, hand in hand, all of our gods one, we're in full compassion, non-judgment, non-ego, non-negativity, stillness of mind, gentleness, kindness, generosity, humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, benevolence, prosperity, abundance. And we are all one. And we are all love. And we are all God. And our God force love light energy is in all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. And it continues to intensify and it continues to expand. We immediately form a massive circle of light around the equator of this planet Earth, Gaia Aria, in this now, in this meditation. This is the light of the gods within each and every one of us. It is God's source, pure, deep, eternal love. It is so brilliant that it grays out the darkness of, of sacred space. It would take over a thousand billion suns in this solar system alone to even come close to its brilliance. And we are flooding all of our brothers and sisters. All life, the highest supreme value in the universe, with this light that we are with this God that we are. And this is eternal, always. Head to toe, inside and out, including this planet, Earth, Gaia, Arya. Pure, deep, eternal love, the deepest of eternal gratitude, the deepest of eternal pure peace, all of it. Do you honestly believe that the lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies can sustain themselves in this high frequency that increases day by day, moment by moment? So we ascend above the planet as the circle of light, as the gods that we are part of the collective consciousness, pure consciousness. We're immediately met with this massive ocean of glitter. It's everywhere. And it's trillions of these vibrant colored lights reflecting everything off and on all of us gathered in this meditation. And we're immediately met with emerald green flaming healing light of Archangel Raphael. This is a column of light that reminds us all that we are the power of healing. Then we're met with the, the violet blue purple flaming light of Archangel Michael. This is a column of light that reminds us all of our omnipotent power, strength, and resolve. Then we're met with the white fire. This is a column of light that reminds each and every single one of us that from head to toe, inside and out, we are imbued with a white fire armor. It emanates from the God force, love, light, energy, deep within us, our core, the God. It is always eternal. We are protected always, eternally, head to toe, inside and out. No entities, no lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies, no demons, no possessions, no attachments can ever affect us or even come near us, 
ever. We are protected 24-7. But only you, only you, only you have the power that if you decide to lower your vibrational frequency low enough, whether consciously or unconsciously, through hatred, anger, fear, greed, envy, you will create a breach in your white fire armor, enough so to allow all the lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies to come flooding in. Now, if you do decide to do this, you are immediately met with the purple transmuting flame. This is a column of light that reminds each and every one of us that we can bring in the purple transmuting flame, we can transmute all these lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies into neutral light substance, and we can send them to pure consciousness where they are gone, they are no more. Then we're met with the violet ray. This is a column of light that reminds each and every one of us that we can bring in the violet ray right behind the purple transmuting flame. We can cleanse and purify the area where these lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies were, sealing the breach in our white fire armor and restoring the harmony of our deep eternal love, gratitude, and peace. We are then met with the golden white pink light. This is a column of light. It reminds each and every one of us that we are the sun. We are the sunlight. We are the sunsets. We are the sunrises. We are the rain and the rainbows. We are the trees and the forest. We are the oceans, the rivers, the lakes, the streams. We are the animals. We are the sky, the clouds, we are the snow. We're everything. So the next time you see a sunset or a sunrise or any beautiful vista or anything that you view in awe of in its beauty, it is you that you're in awe of in its beauty. When you lie in the sun and you feel the sun's rays, you're bathing in the God that you are. We continue to ascend above this planet and we come into full view of this massive crystal and light tower which we created, which is larger than this solar system. And in the center of the core, the center of the column, we see this oblong sphere, this massive golden white light shimmering and sparkling, sending out waves of mist, saturating, penetrating us all head to toe inside and out. And surrounding it are endless color rings of light sending out in turn beautiful waves of mist saturating and penetrating all of us. The golden white light in the center is deep eternal love. And then another one comes and it's gratitude, peace, bliss, joy, gentleness, kindness, generosity, well-being prosperity, abundance, happy life. It's endless. And it's all reflections of us, of you. At the top, we designed it so the golden ocean can come cascading down 360 degrees, as it continually does, eternally, always, with pure, deep, eternal love flooding us all, head to toe, inside and out, with deep eternal peace, deep eternal gratitude, endless. We are the drops of this golden ocean. We hold the essence of this golden ocean. The ocean is the drops and the drops of the ocean. And the only illusion is separation. We see our meditative sphere. It sets center circle. We created this sphere over three years ago. It holds well over 1,200 of our meditations in perpetual motion. All of this good intent, this love that we are, coming from all of us, the gods, 
concentrating on this planet, all of us from everywhere and all existence gathered in consciousness, part of the collective consciousness, awake, liberating this planet, the atmosphere, all life, highest supreme value universe, all being transformed into higher and higher and higher vibrational frequencies. These lower dark matters, survival matter frequencies, can no longer sustain their frequency and a high frequency. This is true liberation and ascension of this planet and this civilization. This is why this fear can be seen, heard, and felt, and all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. And this is why it continues to intensify and it continues to expand. And it communicates with all of us because it is us. Happy life. Deep gratitude. Always. Appreciation. Always. This is the journey that we selected. Gratitude unlocks the fullness of life. Happy life. Seeing the positive within all negative things. I join you in meditation and return to close the cell.
Take an easy breath in through the nose. An easy breath out through the mouth. Move easily and slowly. Always in deep appreciation and gratitude, even for the negatives. There's always positive in all negatives. That's our natural state of being. That's our happy life. Your choice. Choose to go within and stay within and continue to discover the glory that you are or continue to embrace the external alley of the illusionary world. Take this with you for the rest of the day, into the evening and night, into the following morning. And we'll be back here, February 24th, 2021, 3 p.m. Eastern, to continue our Global Guided Meditation call, and 9 p.m. for our Time for Change call.